Hello and welcome to another video by the Bearded Tech Guy. In this video of my Making Smart Things Smarter series, we will be taking a look at how to add Google Home right into Samsung Smart Things so that you are able to directly control your Google Home devices from the Smart Things app, but more importantly, be able to include Google Home devices in your everyday smart home automations. If you aren't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to be one of the first to know when I release new videos just like this one, along with many other tech and home automation videos. For this project, we will be installing and setting up Cast Web API. This is a community-created project that makes it easy to directly integrate with your Google Home devices. The only downside to this is that you are required to have a device that's always on to allow for the two-way communication. Luckily, the developer has made this available for many different platforms including Windows, Mac, Linux, and there's even a Raspberry Pi image. I also believe there are a few Docker images available as well. In the spirit of the DIY aspect of home automation, we will be covering how to install Cast Web API on a Raspberry Pi 4B. Outside of the installation and setup of the Raspberry Pi, everything else is the same about using Cast Web API and any of the other installation options. This includes a few tips I'd like to mention before getting started. First, the device running the Cast Web API software must be on the same subnet as your Samsung SmartThings Hub. In addition to this, you'll also want to make sure your SmartThings Hub is also on the same subnet as your Google Home devices. This is due to how everything communicates with each other and how discovery works. Chances are very good that your whole home network is in fact on one subnet but is something I wanted to mention. If you are having connectivity issues, I would suggest seeing if your wireless router has some sort of guest network set up that your devices are connected to. If it does, you want to make sure that everything is all on the same network. It's also worth mentioning that oftentimes the guest network set up on home wireless networks is set up to prevent devices from communicating with each other. If that's the case, you will also see issues. I'd also like to point out that this will interrupt anything playing on your Google Home device. The only way around this is to set up Google Assistant integration, but that will then only allow broadcast for messages without interrupting media playback. This is a limitation of what Google allows to be done. For this project, I will be using my Raspberry Pi 4B with 4 gigs of RAM. The software is written for ARM 7, so any Raspberry Pi from the 2B and up should have no issues. I'd also like to mention that you will need to have Node.js installed prior to installing Cast Web API, which is something I will not be covering in this video. It is very straightforward and I will include a link in the description below for some helpful instructions. I also strongly encourage you to have your Raspberry Pi set up with a static IP address. If it ever changes, this integration will break until you fix it within SmartThings. To get started, first make sure all of your packages are up to date. Once done, we need to install the Cast Web API packages. Do this by issuing the command sudo npm install cast-web-api-cli space-g. This will take a bit of time depending on your internet connection in Raspberry Pi. This will download and install all packages required. You can go ahead and pause the video while everything is installed. And while you wait, feel free to look at the subscribe button. Maybe click it if it's red. Once everything is done, we can now issue the command cast-web-api-cli to see a list of options available that can be run. Now let's check the status of Cast Web API. To do this, issue the command cast-web-api-cli space status. If the output looks like this, that means it's not running. After installation, it will not auto start. You will need to start it with the Cast Web API start command. I also recommend setting this up to auto start on boot up so that way if your Raspberry Pi reboots, for any reason you don't have to worry about logging into it and starting the Cast Web API again. If everything was installed properly, your screen should look similar to mine. For the next step, you will need the address listed under address. If it's showing 127.0.0.1, you will need to grab the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. You can do this by issuing the command ifconfig. Here you will see all your connections. You'll want to grab the IP address of your network connection as we will need it soon. If the IP under address is different than 127.0.0.1, you can just grab that. Next I recommend trying to browse to the IP address we just captured from a computer or mobile device that is connected to the same network as your SmartThings hub. To do this, just open a browser such as Google Chrome, IceWeasel, or Firefox and enter in the IP address we captured followed by a colon and the number 3000. Yours will most likely start with a 192.168 address. If you get the following page, you will know that everything so far has been set up correctly and we can move on to getting things added into Samsung SmartThings. Next, we will need to install a couple of device handlers in the Smart App itself. To do this, open up the Samsung SmartThings IDE and navigate to My Device Handlers. From here, click on Create New Device Handler. On the new window that opens up, click on the From Code tab. Then you will paste in the first device handler code into the empty text box. You can find a link below for where to find all of these resources. 
After it's pasted in, click on Create. You should see at the top a green banner saying Created Smart Device. This lets you know it was created successfully. Next click on Publish and click on For Me. This will allow the device handler to be used by your SmartThings hub. After that, click on Save which will bring you back to the previous screen. You should now see a new device handler listed. You will need to repeat the previous steps one more time to add a second device handler. Make sure you publish this one as well. After you added the second device handler in, you should see the two new devices, CastWeb API and CastWeb Device. They should both show Publish. Next, click on My Smart Apps. On the new page, click on New Smart App. You will again click on the From Code tab and paste in the code for the Smart App. Once it's pasted in, click on Create. Next, click on Publish and click on For Me. Clicking on Save brings you back to the previous screen and you should now see the CastWeb Service Manager Smart App listed as published. Now that we have successfully installed CastWeb API on our Raspberry Pi and installed all the needed device handlers and Smart App, we can go into the SmartThings Classic App to set everything up. Please note this step has to be completed in the Classic App. It does not work in the new SmartThings app at the time of making this video. To get started, open the SmartThings Classic App and navigate to Automation and Smart Apps. and then click on Add a Smart App. From here, scroll to the bottom and then click on My Apps. On the new screen that opens up, click on Cast Web Service Manager. This will bring us to the initial setup of the Smart App. Next, click on API Host Address. This will be the address we captured earlier from our Cast Web API installation. If you enter in a 127.0.0.1 address, you have the wrong address. And also make sure to include a colon 3000 at the end. After your address is entered, click on Test API Connection. This will make sure that your SmartThings hub is able to communicate with your CastWeb software. If everything is good, it will come back as connected and with a 200 response message. Click on Next at the top right hand corner to go back to the initial setup page. Next click on Service Manager Log Level and set it to 0. This will prevent a large number of logs to be generated that aren't needed unless you are troubleshooting an issue. Next click on Discover Devices. Here will be all of the currently discovered Google Home devices on your network. This may initially take a few minutes to populate, and it could take a while for everything to show up. After about 5 minutes, if nothing shows up in this list, I suggest going through the previous steps to make sure everything is set up correctly up to this point. Select the devices you want to be added to SmartThings. Also take note that speaker groups are able to be added as well, which is great for home automation rules. Once you have what you want selected, click on Done in the top right hand corner. Then click on Next. And then lastly, click on Save. Let's now check out the devices that have been added to SmartThings. At first, everything will come in as CastWeb Device. I left everything alone for a bit and a few populated their names correctly on their own. I also went into the CastWeb API device and clicked on the refresh button a few times which populated a few more. If after a little while the names do not populate or you don't want to wait, you can click on one of the devices with a generic name and raise or lower the volume from the app. This will cause the device itself to change its volume with an audible notification that can let you know which device it is. While we are in one of the devices, let's take a look at the different button options we have. You can play and pause media playback, you can change the volume, you'll see information if something is playing on the device, and you'll see a number of preset buttons. These can be programmed to play DRM free media. I will include a link in the description below that covers more about presets. With everything installed and working, it's time to set up some automations to use our newly added Google Home devices. While everything I will be going over for the rest of the video will be in WebCore, you can use other rule engines to interact with Google Home devices. This includes the built-in rule engine in the new SmartThings app. For example, you can create a rule for if a contact sensor is opened, you can have your Google speak letting you know the door was opened. And you can set up the opposite for when the contact sensor is closed, having Google let you know the door was closed. Let's now take a look at how to use Google devices in WebCore. Like any new device we want included in WebCore, we must go into the settings for the Smart App and add it. Once added in, we can go into the dashboard and create a new piston. We'll first create an if statement for if a button is pushed, have a Google Home device speak text. To do this, click on add a new statement and then click on add an if. Next click on add a condition and for this if statement I'm going to select my button and its button attribute and set the comparison to gets pushed. Next, click on Add a New Statement under Then. In the new window that opens up, click on Add an Action. Next, click on the drop-down and select your Google device or speaker group. 
Also note you can select more than one device here if you wanted. After the device or devices are selected, click on Add. And on the next screen, click on the drop down. Here we can see a lot of different tasks we can run with Google Home, such as adjust the volume, mute the device, skip a track, pause, or play. For this piston, we are going to scroll down and select Speak Text. Under Value, enter the text you want Google to speak. You can set the volume level for this action, but you will have to add another action in to set the original volume level. Once filled in, click on Add. Next, we will go through and create two additional if statements. The first if will be if a contact sensor opens, then have Google Home speak. And the second will be if the contact sensor closes, have the Google Home say something else. With the three if statements, let's test things out. The button was just pushed. The door was just opened. The door was just closed. Great, the piston acted as expected. I made a few modifications to the piston so that I can demonstrate a few different options we have. Pushing the first button triggers the Nest Hub. Pushing the second button triggers the Lenovo Smart Display. Pushing button 3 triggers the Google Home Mini. And pushing the fourth button triggers a speaker group that has all three speakers in it. Let's test them out. Button 1 has been pushed. Button 2 has been pushed. Button 3 has been pushed. Button 4 has been pushed. As can be seen, this is a very powerful addition to SmartThings that allows you to add spoken text into your automations. A few examples I've come up with so far in using this are for notifying when the laundry is done, when lightning is detected nearby, if my auto mower robot lawnmower gets stuck, or heavy rain has started and windows are open. All of this is run through WebCore, which if you're looking for help with WebCore or want to see how I built some of my other pistons, make sure to check out my Getting to Know WebCore series, where I go into great detail on how I set up many of my home automation pistons. I'd love to hear about what you plan on using Cast Web API for, so make sure to let me know in the comments below. Or if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up as it helps out the channel immensely. Thank you for watching.